Moving overseas can be both exciting and lonely. It's exciting because you're moving to a whole new country and a whole new life, and lonely because, well, it just gets lonely sometimes. You've left your friends and family behind, and quite often your own family, your partner and your children, are out of the house for a good part of the day. So it's up to you to find your own life. Sometimes simply finding food is an adventure, and you've got nobody really to share that with. Doing it all without help and without somebody to offload to can be really hard. Hello, welcome to Expatability. My name's Carol and I'm your expat life mentor. I'm here to help you navigate the challenges of moving and living overseas so that you can live your dream expat life abroad. Yes, expat life can be a dream, but it can also be really hard work for many people. So I'm here to support you throughout the realities of relocation. With no sugar coating, no fluff, and lots of sensible practical advice and information to help you on your way. Today I want to talk to you about the number one struggle I hear from all expats. Finding friends. Now I can't help you make friends, that's up to you but I can give you some ideas on how to find people to talk to who will then hopefully become real life friends. In the first few months of living abroad, you might feel isolated, lonely and bored. Your new life overseas means leaving behind old friends, close family, social groups and networks, and even the familiar faces in your neighborhood. This can be really difficult. If you had a big support network at home, you may find the isolation of expat life hard to deal with at first. Of course, you haven't actually lost your friends and family at home, but you may find the time difference makes it harder to stay in touch with them. So what can you do to avoid expat isolation? You need to find friends. If you look at this as an exercise of finding other adults to talk to, you'll feel under less pressure to find your next best friend forever. If you do find a lifelong friend at the same time, consider it a bonus. The key to it all is to be proactive. Put yourself out there and keep putting yourself out there. Some people find making friends really easy, but others don't. Some countries and cultures have a big expat population with lots of clubs and groups for you to join. Others do not. You may be an introvert who finds it really hard to put yourself out there and talk to other people. You may be an extrovert who can't find your tribe and your gregarious nature is now under pressure with no stimulation. The basic difference between extroverts and introverts is that extroverts gain energy from other people while introverts find interacting really draining. But everyone needs to talk to other adult humans, so introverts really do have to force themselves out of their comfort zone in order to do this. It's worth it. The next piece of advice I have for you is to say yes to everything. Accept every invitation you receive. Even if the invitation is for something that's not really your thing, go anyway. You never know what you might find. So go to everything you hear about or get invited to. This is how you'll find like-minded people and you'll probably make a friend or two. If you're moving overseas to a country where the language is different, joining a language class is your best starting point and is often a great way to meet new people who are in exactly the same situation as you. This next suggestion is for you to find something that you enjoy doing. You'll need to find a hobby to keep you occupied. Join a club or class. This can be easy if you're fluent in the local language and know what you're looking for. Not quite so easy if it's a language you don't know well or you aren't entirely sure what you'd like to try your hand at. If you're lucky, you may find that there is a large community of expats who run various groups, clubs and classes that suit you. This tends to happen in countries where there is a large expat community. Personally, I prefer arts, crafts and culture, but perhaps you would prefer to join the running clubs and book clubs, or maybe hiking groups and knitting groups. There's lots of groups that pop up in most expat communities. 
other ideas. Find yoga classes or dance classes. They're always great fun if you don't know the language. If there isn't something you fancy in your own community, why don't you start something up yourself? Here's another idea. Take a look at some of the embassies where you live. If you live in a city, of course. They quite often run cultural events and some may even run public groups. By following your own personal interests, you're most likely to meet like-minded people. Another tool in your Finding Friends arsenal is to use your kids. Kids are brilliant. They can make friends so easily. They simply walk up to other kids and ask if they can play too. Language is no barrier. It's wonderful and I think perhaps adults should try this as well. It's much easier to meet new people when you have young children. They're great icebreakers. You can join in play groups, baby groups, meet other parents at the school gates and so on. It's much more difficult when your children are older and independent though. And of course some countries have a door-to-door -door transport service, so you never actually get to the school gates in the first place. Now while no more school runs is a great relief, the opportunity to meet other parents disappears as your child takes off on their own. So do your best to try and facilitate your child's social life and at the same time you may end up finding one of your own. Make it easy for them to meet up with their friends out of school hours and hopefully you'll find the parents to be just as friendly. Some countries and cultures are harder to crack than others. Some schools have huge parent networks while others have nothing at all. If your child attends a school like that and all your attempts to talk to other parents have failed, how about persuading your child to take up a sport that's in your neighbourhood as opposed to a school sport? There are usually some sports clubs around in most places and you can definitely talk to other parents when you're standing on a freezing field watching a match. I just want to mention something called the expat bubble. Many expats gravitate to other expats from their own country. What a waste when there's so many wonderful people out there from all over the world. OK, so with other expats of your own nationality, it's great to be able to talk about what you miss from your home country, have similar reference points and outlooks, and also possibly connect with someone who has the same sense of humour as you. But just because you share the same nationality, this doesn't automatically mean that other expats from home are going to naturally be your best friends. Don't ignore expats of other nationalities. You may find you have more in common with them than from those of your own country. Ultimately, it's much more important to find your kind of people. People who have things in common with, not just nationality. In some places, such as Singapore or Dubai, there is a huge and established expat network. But again, it's still about finding your kind of people. It's easy to slip into these communities, even if they don't fit your personality, because it's actually easier than getting out, meeting and integrating with others. Ultimately, you need to be true to yourself, although at least other expats are usually looking for friendships. Here are some suggestions to help you find lovely people closer to your new home. Making friends with local people may take a bit longer, especially if there is a challenge of a language barrier, but it's so worth it. The language can make it harder to get to really know people, which is why a lot of expats are quite happy just to hang out with other expats. It's all about trying to find people that you resonate with. A social life comes in all formats, from close friendships to casual conversations on the street or in your local shop. Talk to strangers. If you have a front garden, work out there and greet everyone who passes. It's a great way to meet the neighbours. You could even just sit on the doorstep watching the world go by. Be weird, it's fun. Get to know your neighbours. And if you are in a country where you have to live on a compound, you'll find that there are expats in a similar position to you. Compound living is a given, a compulsory aspect of living in some countries, 
and it's a kind of rarefied experience. It suits some people and not others. OK, this one's a bit radical, but get a dog. A lot of expats have found this a perfect way of meeting new people. Or join a gym. Local classes and courses and clubs and so on are the natural place to meet new people. Volunteering is another highly recommended expat experience. Are there any volunteering opportunities near you? Google volunteering and NGOs in your area. NGO means non-governmental organisation. Some questions for you to think about are, what are you good at? What can you help with? What are your interests? What did you do before kids? And can this skill be utilised to help other people? Moving overseas forces you to take the initiative. If you don't get out there, if you're not proactive, then I'm afraid expat isolation is going to stick around. You really have to get out there and make your own life. Please accept that feeling isolated will happen, but it's only temporary and only you can help yourself get out of it. So make an effort to explore your neighbourhood, remain open and friendly and greet everybody, get to know your town, join some groups, something that you'll find interesting in your own right. You don't have to make a huge commitment, just take baby steps, you'll get there. And every time you step out of your comfort zone, your life is getting that much better. When you move overseas, you need to be prepared to start your social life from scratch. Of course, stay in contact with your old friends, but you do need to make new friends in your new home. Do something that you would enjoy anyway, and treat every friend that you make as a massive bonus. Remember, start off by simply talking to people. If you don't talk to people, how can you know if they're your people? How can you know if they're your tribe? So get out there, start talking to people, and you'll soon have a whole new circle of friends that will stay with you forever, with a shared expat experience, which is something that you cannot underestimate. So let's quickly summarise. The first point is to be proactive. You have to get out there and keep on putting yourself out there. It's the only way you're going to meet people. Say yes to every invitation, even if you don't want to go. Talk to everyone, and that means everyone. Don't be afraid to speak a new language. It's the only way you're going to learn. Join some clubs. Find a new hobby, something that works for you and that you would enjoy even if there aren't any other people to talk to. And find out if there are any volunteering groups in your area. Volunteering is a great way to meet people at the same time as doing something wonderful and useful. Start off by just making contact and talking to people. When you're isolated, you can go for days without talking to another adult, so just start with the intention of doing that. Work up to making friends. It's wonderful to just get out of the house and chat to other people. And remember, the world's largest universal language is a smile. So do that, and you're already on the way to making new friends. Thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please get in touch with me. The details are alongside this video. And I look forward to seeing you in the Expatability Club again soon. Take care now.